Okay, part two. Uh, so in this one, I'm going to be covering a few things that actually were released in NX 11.02. Some things are, are, are 12 specific. Um, uh, the uh, 12, 12 tends to enhance what was what was released in NX uh, in NX 11.02. Um, and I'll do an introduction to uh, uh, NX layout and animation designer, uh, animation designer for uh, for engine for for designers. Um, Get out of that one. Close that one. Interesting. The first one I'm going to do is a is what's called a variable offset face. So this one, when I first saw it, it uh, it's kind of one of those um, workflow changers. Oh, that seems a lot louder. Um, it, I have a relatively simple sheet body here. It's a very, very thin, very thin body, uh, and I want to do some offsets on that. Uh, in my surface tab, on one of these more pull downs here, I have a, what's called a variable offset face. When I open this up, I can offset a panel or offset a pad. Uh, the pad is new in NX uh, uh, 12, so I'll show off what we could do in NX 11. 1102 that is. Over here into a variable offset face I have the set to panel. And there's a bunch of different settings down here. I can offset this as a new body. I'll set the original body. Uh, and when I do offset as a new body I'll have a, 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 solid, off, a solid offset option. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. So I want to offset this as the original body. Uh, my projection direction is going to be normal to the face and we'll see that here in just a second. Oops, that's not the face I want to pick. There we go. I'll select these as my boundaries. There's just sheet bodies that, that intersect the part. And really all it's doing is creating an intersection curve on the part. And this is where the projection direction comes into play. And every one of these gives me a little arrowhead. So I can reverse my direction. They all go the right, the same direction. And I can just grab one of these and say I want to make this minus 15. And it steps that one up. I come, I'll skip that middle set. I'll make that one six millimeters positive, minus four, and then maybe three millimeters down here. I'll let you pick in the, the window there. And this one here, I want to change it. Um, when I click on the arrowhead, I have this option to either put in a value for offset or turn it into a bridge. So very quickly, I'm taking a, a, a simple piece of geometry and making it rather complex. So let's go ahead and hide these guys. So that's pretty complex. It kind of changes the, the way I would go about designing a part from the beginning if I know I can do these, this, this offset this easily. Okay, so I'll Control-Z that. Oh, I guess I got Control-Z a few times. There we go. The new one that they've added in NX12 is the ability to put a pad in. So I have here as a, as a sketch, and I want to create a, a pad into my part into my sheet body. I'll go to variable offset face again. I'm going to switch it to pad. Select, select my target face and I select the boundary. And I get this little drag handle in here. I'm going to drag that down. And this is a projection direction so that the, it's basically taking that sketch and projecting it onto the face and this is fa uh, uh, projecting it to face normals. I can reverse the side of this. Uh, actually I can Reverse the projection direction right there. That one, probably not what I want. It's giving it a little bit uh, a weird uh, face to it, so I'll project it down inside of it. I can go uh, normal to the face or normal to the curve. And you see how the difference there is, is it's projecting out just a little bit more. And if I turn on my little datum axis here, oops, I want to do this as the original body. There we go. And I'll switch my along a vector, and I want to make sure I pick a, uh, an inferred vector on here. And when I pick that inferred vector, that's the projection direction, essentially going the other direction up to the face. And it gets a little closer out here to the edge. 
So again, I'm able to create rather complex geometry very quickly using the variable offset face and, and uh, the pad approach. Okay. Control Z that. I'm going to bring my intersecting bodies back. And again, I'm going to do a uh, variable offset face. This is one where it's this is this is newly added into NX12. So I'll, I'll pick a few of these and I'll skip that one there. And uh, I want this to offset as, a, as a, a new body and I want to offset as a solid. It tells me right here that uh, all the offsets are set to zero. It's like, okay, I'm getting there. So I'll make this one six. And then turn this one into a bridge. And you can see here a, a preview that is, is showing me that it's offsetting this as a solid. I say OK. I'm going to use Control W so I can hide all of a, of a certain type. I'm going to hide all sheet bodies. And that's my resultant body. And that's a solid body. This is new in NX1201. So uh, uh, can be handy, I suppose. Come back here to my part two. A tool that was released in NX12 that very few people even know about. Um, I've got here um, sheet body design where or sh this is all in, uh, all sheet bodies, and I, if I work hard enough, I can work. I can turn this into a solid body. So come over here to my. Let's go back to modeling. This opens up in Shape Studio. Go to my surface tab. There is this uh, uh, trim and extend, and I can tell it to make a corner. If I select this one and then this one, oops, unselect that one, now I'll select that one. I made a corner out of those. I need to flip those back and forth and say, okay, got that one. I'll pick that original body again and I'll select this body over here. That looks good. And I'll say, okay. And I work my way around this and eventually I can turn this into um, a solid body if I work hard enough. So that's, that's a lot of button clicking and a lot of you know making sure I flip it back and forth and uh, make it uh, do what I want it to do. There's a new tool added. Oops, too far. On my surface tab, more there's a combine section up here where in combine they put unso and boss and uh, and combine. I'm not sure why unso is there, but there you go. Uh, and then in combine body or combine, I, I select the bodies that I want to pick. So I just start picking all these bodies, and it's automatically building uh, the bodies for me. And but it didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. It got close. I picked all of those bodies that I wanted, and I have a preview here. But um, I can then tell it to say find volume. It found the volume in there, and I say okay, that's good. Now I have a solid body section that and see right through it. So I'm going to bring back that guy right there. And it will roll back. I'll add that body in. Then it kind of um, doesn't do a very good job of it until I click find volume on it again. And then it will find that volume and I can add that hole in there that I should have picked the first time. So this is a huge, huge time saver. Um, got another one over here. This one I'm not going to make a solid out of it, but I'm going to use combine to select this body and this body. Uh, but uh, I don't want to keep those. I want to keep uh, something different. Keep that one. So I'll remove this one up here, and I'll keep that set right here. I'll pick that differently. There we go. And I've got this one set down here. I want to I want to make this kind of a kind of a closed loop section anyway. Uh, I'll pick the region to keep, and I'll keep that region right there, and say okay. So now I've got that combined really quickly, without using the uh, the make corner or trimming and sewing. This is one solid one one sheet body for me. So I pick the sheet body. That's one sheet body.
In, uh, uh, again, back in 11, they released uh, a tool called Forming and Flattening. On my Surface tab, oh, my Surface tab, way down here at the end, there's a little um, a tool under Shape called Forming and Flattening. This is a, this was kind of a huge deal uh, when it first came out. Uh, Siemens thought, thought it was so important that they actually backported it uh, to previous versions all the way back to NX85. Um, it's been tested quite extensively, and um, uh, the results uh, of the, the aerospace folks that have been testing it uh, really love this tool. So I'm going to flatten this part. This is a sheet body. I'm going to flatten it out. So I'm going to I select out all the faces. I'm going to pick an origin point, and it asks me to pick the U and V directions. If I pick U, the V is automatically assumed, and I can come down here to distortion map. I don't want any fixed objects on there, and I, I'll, then I'll I'll see uh, that it, that it gets flattened. And you could probably imagine from this that if you were to flatten this part, it's going to see a lot of stress. So uh, in this part, uh, I could, or in this uh, diagnostics down here, I can show the 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 length distortion, or the area distortion, min max value shown up here, and then the uh, uh, the angle distortion. Um, this tool doesn't care about physics. It doesn't care that it's aluminum or titanium or steel. It just takes that geometry and flattens it. So it, it only works on sheet bodies. So if it's a, uh, a solid part, I can, I can create like a, either a mid-plane sheet body or uh, flatten the inner, inner surface or outer surface. What they've added here is the ability to uh, select curves to rip. So if I switch this on to length, I see up here that this is probably gonna tear, tear to pieces. If I go to flatten this, or if it was a flat sheet and I'm trying to, to form it, um, it's going to uh, do some pretty pretty crazy wrinkling. Uh, so they've added in this, this ability to rip edges. So I'm going to pick these edges to rip. And you'll see how it's, it's unforming itself. So I'm actually going to uncheck preview because it's, it takes a little bit of time to collect all those. Do all of these here. And I'll turn my preview back on. And I see here that it's still kind of got a, a bit of a banana shape to it. If I say show result, uh, that's the result I'm going to get if I stick with it. So I want to constrain something. I want to constrain this, this bottom flat face. I want to make sure that it, it, it's not deforming at all. So I'm going to create a fixed element set and just pick that bottom flat face. And now when I look at it, it looks pretty straight. I can go into my length or my distortion map here and see the maximum distortion and I don't see those those, those angry red uh, 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 issues up here on the top edge and cycle through all of my, my different distortion maps and I can say okay hide this one and that could be my flat pattern that I could then form into the the original cup there Uh, it's fun watching the CAD wars and who's 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 uh, flattening and who's not flattening out there. Who's doing it well? If you watch YouTube, um, there's a bunch of them out there. And there's one here that uh, I'll show some of these, but uh, let's see part two. I guess I should have staged this part. It's a big one. So uh, with NX11 as well, they've added in uh, uh, lattice. NX12, they've extended that lattice to be able to, to handle a, like a, a conforming shape. So if I flatten this, I have a, an internal volume here that I've applied a lattice to. I'll go ahead and hide this. And just over here in my, my more pull down, there's a lattice. It just seems like this really, that's a tool that they just added into modeling. Um, and I'm going to switch this to a conformal graph. Uh, it, I pick a base face, 
conformal graph is what's been added in NX, in NX12. Uh, if you're not familiar with Lattice at all, uh, Lattice has 15 what they call unit cells or cell types. Uh, if you hover over each one of them, it, t it shows you a preview of them. This one I'm going to leave on Octopeak because I know it works for this particular part. One of the things that I found in this is that when you're experimenting with a lattice is, for one, it's very, very calculationally intensive, so it takes some time to build this geometry. Um, so when you're playing around with it, allow yourself a little bit of time. And as I select that face, uh, my parameterization value down here is set to automatic, and you can see a little UV grid line that shows up on the, on the part. Uh, I'm going to do an offset of minus 6, and I'm going to just create uh, uh, two layers here. Uh, I'm going to have it automatically trim to these outside faces here. And I say OK. And this particular one actually uh, produces pretty quickly. Go ahead and hide that sheet body in the center. And I've created a lattice structure on the inside. If I look at my part navigator, that's called a convergent body. I'll cover a little bit more on convergent bodies in the, in the third part of our uh, What's New series. But uh, it's basically uh, it's a faceted it's a faceted representation. This is a, what similarly will be considered like an STL, but this is a, a NX version of, a, of the uh, faceted body now. So I'll throw an edge blend down here of a couple millimeters, and then if I highlight that, let's go to like a wireframe mode. Look at that straight on. I do have the the end peaks poking into the uh, this, the the body a little bit more all the way through so it's not just a lattice that's hanging out in space to do a to do a lattice uh, just a, a, a non-conformal lattice the, la the what we could do in MX11 is I'll pick a lattice here unit graph I'll select the body so you have to have a the, the internal void you have to create as a body uh, the, this is what I want to apply the lattice to I have manipulators in here so I can drag it up and down rotate the angle of it decide how I like to put this in here and then again I want to select these faces to trim off the uh, disconnected lattice portions and remove the little dangling rods so what this is a new thing also in NX12 what would happen before is that you get the lattice structure built you have these little rods that just stick out doing nothing they're not supporting anything uh, there's no reason to have them so uh, they uh, allowed these uh, dangling rods just to be uh, to automatically be removed and I say okay take a little bit longer go ahead and hide that I can see my lattice structure built of course this is a uh, ideal for like 3d printing I'll we'll see a little bit more from uh, uh, from this uh, later on in the in the presentation set but uh, lattice is a is pretty uh, pretty cool tool it does create a convergent body and it sounds like uh, we're, they'll be moving this to a, a parasolid sometime, maybe this year. Uh, so it, it's it's more editable. But if you zoom in on it, you can see how kind of how a little bit it's a little bit chunky on it. The other thing that they've done in the conformal lattice work is. is uh, I'm going to switch this back to conformal graph and if I pick the, uh, uh, the surface here switch it back to automatic and I see my, my, my UV grid that gets built on it um, automatic it gives me kind of a, a, a just a, a, a nice XY grid it's, it's automatically calculating it for me there's another one in here added that's called equidistant that allows me to pick two points Those two points basically let me adjust the angle of what, how I want that graph to show up. And this is how it's going to build the, uh, the lattice structure. There's a contour aligned, which allow, allows me to pick four points. It's this, this face tapers down. If I pick my contour points around the part, my UV grid basically squishes down. It gets smaller as it gets to the smaller face. These are I'm not going to execute because uh, they take a good eight to ten minutes each to, to try and produce. So it's one of those that you, uh, in an evening while drinking a couple of uh, you know, beverages, I'll uh, play around with this and see how it works. And 
like, oh, that one worked, and I like oh, that. That's kind of a neat one to do, but it's it's definitely time consuming. It's not something I just get in and play around with. The future of this is they're adding in a. Uh, hopefully, we see it in the next actual release. Is a quick, uh, a rapid show that'll kind of give you a glimpse of what it's going to do in the end, um, and then when you click go, it's 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 still going to be pretty calculationally intensive, but you get a you get a good fast preview. Um, There's another one where you could do the, uh, the, the, the regular lattice and the conformal lattice uh, on the inside. Uh, actually, that's not the one I wanted to open. Another new one that they've added in is uh, what's called a cylindrically aligned. And the cylindrically aligned means that it, uh, all the lattices I've shown so far are not closed in what they, uh, what they call closed in U or it's a cylinder, which means it will come all the way back on itself and, and, and end where it started. So I could do a cylindrically aligned, pick this, these two faces, and it needs a split curve. And I'll switch that to a single curve here. And you can see how it's going to build the, the grid around here. And if I bump that up to like 0.75, my grid gets bigger. If I bump it up to one inch, this grid gets bigger. This one I had a few, few beverages on watching this one get created because it takes a long time. Um, and this one is extremely calculationally intensive. Um, flip this to the other side here, uh, and I can either have it on the inside or the outside. I've already built this one, so I'm just going to show it. Okay, I guess I'm going to show it here. There we go. You see just, just my lattice. Kind of looks like a chain link. You zoom in on it and see how the how it's all connected to one another. Can you zoom in where that split line was? It looks like it isn't really connected to Good eye. Uh, <laughs> looking at looking at the future too, it looks like there's going to be ways of connecting these. Um, I would have to probably do something else and create another surface in here to add in these connecting pieces. Otherwise, uh, uh, I, I if I printed this, I'd have this weak spot right here, right? So kind of an example. I've created an inner wall and an outer wall that I could then thicken and create. This is my inner my inner strengthening lattice work on a 3D printed part. Okay, this one I think took about 25 minutes to actually produce. And it was one of about 15 that I tried. So it took a while. 10 minutes, all right. So how many people in here use the sheet metal package? Um, sheet metal has been enhanced. Uh, the Flange has been greatly, well, greatly changed, let's just say. It used to be I could pick a flange, and if I wanted to pick multiple flanges that are all 25 millimeters tall, I'd say apply, and I'd go to the next flange, and I'd say apply, and I'd go to the next flange. I could tie them together with, with, uh, with expressions. Um, now, in flange, I grab them all. And I get this little the familiar angle handle over here. They all operate together. I went a little too far on that one. If I had one that was up and one that was down, they all have, they're all stuck together as the same as, as a, at the same unit. Not uh, I can't make uh, no I cannot make put a flange on a flange. I have to make that a secondary operation. This is also a list collector, so if I add a new add a new set over here, I have a different set of values that I can create for that one, and I can also turn on in geometric properties. I can turn on a miter, probably not with two sets. So if I 
bring this out, turn on a miter, they'll miter them together, and even do so when I pull it to the inside. That's a huge change. That was something we've kind of been looking for for a while. Let's get a couple of these open here. I haven't seen very many changes in the contour flange. One of the huge changes that, that, that that's happened here also is, I'll go ahead and get rid of this one, is my tab, my base tab. I've never been able to have uh, internal open volumes or internal open uh, segments in it. Now it's okay with it. And if I make a new tab, just very quickly, create a profile, It'll add geometry to the inside, add geometry to the outside. My, my new additional tab also can have internal geometry as well. And if this internal geometry were to then overlap the existing tab, it'll then cut that out. So a lot more flexibility than what you've had before um, uh, in this in this particular feature. So, uh, how do you impose that the, the second tab cut the first one, but the first one didn't cut the second? Is that just the, just order, the order of operations? Of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Generally, I probably wouldn't make an edit like this. Um, but have, being able to put a second tab on that also cuts into the first tab is probably pretty handy. Um, there's a, a couple of things uh, uh, since like re, uh, refile parts gone away. Uh, there's how do you update the code of your features to the latest code that's available in NX? Uh, there's I have a tab here that I created in NX11, and if I edit this, the old flange used to have a sketch section in it. A lot of people don't even know it's there. But this is, instead of doing secondary cutouts, I can go in and edit the sketch. Siemens never re really recommended this. They, they uh, tried to tell people not to do this for years, but a lot of companies still did. Um, and if I look at my other flange down here, which is created in NX12, this has got the new dialog. Actually, this was also created in NX11, and it has a sketch section also built into it. So I could go in and edit it here. Part of the reason why in NX, previous versions of NX I couldn't pick multiple edges is that reason right there because they created a sketch for me in the background. Uh, there's a tool called Renew Feature. And Renew Feature recomputes the, the code to the latest available code. So if I look at this, the tab can be re, re, uh, recoded, but my tab 3, which is this guy right here, I can't be, but tab 5 can. So if I say OK on that, it brings that code up to the modern code, and now I have the modern flange in here, and my sketch section is gone. And then from here, I can pick another, pick more uh, flanges, or make more flanges within it, just like, can't, just like I can in NX11. But since I've edited the sketch section inside this flange, it won't let me renew it. Getting close on time. So here's one where uh, they've actually done this quite a while ago as far as this ability to, to do uh, multiple offsets and thicken. So I select my face, I'll flip it over. Uh, I can do a six millimeter offset in here. Then I could do a, a secondary offset. So on this part, I want to have this belting section in here be at uh, uh, four millimeters. I need to change something real quick. They've adjusted my model tolerance on it so it doesn't work quite as well. <coughs> they didn't see that. Uh, thicken the part, go back to preview, and then I want my uh, second boundary here, this belting section, to be uh, uh, four millimeters thick. And as I go to pick it, region boundary curves is picking the, the, uh, the uh, a closed loop section on it, and it's not picking it very well. So if I go to my renew feature again, if I zoom in on this area right here, I can see that this, this is a wrap curve, 
and it's wrapping back up onto this fuselage looking part from a sketch down below. My sketch doesn't have that little warp in it, but my wrap curves does. I come down here to the wrap curve, say okay. That's kind of straightened out a little bit. So it's redone the code to the to the most modern code. And again, I'm gonna come over here to thicken. Make that, flip it over. I always want it to come to the inside. I'll turn my preview on so I can see it. I'll go back to wireframe. And then I'll pick this belting section at four. Takes a second to pick it all, and I can see that it's picking it all a little bit better. I'm getting this alert down here because the normal direction seems to always be in the wrong direction for me. And I can see what's what's coming on, what, what is, what's happening with it. I want to add a new set here. So I want all these little pockets to be milled down to two millimeters. Uh, aerospace guys love to can mill. So I'll pick this set. I turn the preview off because it takes a little while, a little bit longer between each button pick to grab all these. I'll show what the preview is. Again, my arrowhead's pointed in the wrong direction, so I'll flip that over. And then I can zoom in and see what, it's, what that one's doing. Very quickly, I've created multiple offsets in my part. My curves off. Let's take sheet bodies off too. I'll go back to my thicken. And in this list down here, I'm going to unpick this pocket. Then I'm going to change that to a face to pierce. So the renew feature is really the what, what I wanted to show on there, as it recalculates the, the feature for me. I also did it on the sheet metal part. That's how, I, that's how I'm going to be able to open up the parts uh, or renew those features into modern uh, 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 code. Uh, previous versions of NX, when you open up a part file from NX5 to NX6, let's say, you look up at the top header and it, op it opens up modified. You didn't do anything to it. All you did is open it. Because what it did in the background is it, 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 it updated all the code to all those, uh, all those features. It's no longer doing that. So when you open up a new part, uh, anywhere from NX8 on, uh, uh, if I open it up, uh, an NX10 part, NX12, it's not going to recompute all the code in the background. It's just going to open my part. And I'm out of time. I'll just go a little bit long. There's a new application in NX called uh, Animation Designer. Animation Designer allows me to uh, take 2D or 3D geometry and animate it. So uh, it is another application. It's a little toggle here. When I toggle that on, I get a new toolbar that shows up. And I get a new uh, uh, tab over here in my resource bar. So this one, I've already done some setup on it. I'm going to show the joints that I've created. I've created a slider joint and a spherical joint. Um, kind of put some, some work into this one already. So I hit play on this. It's kind of certain to do something, but it's not quite what I want, so I'll stop that. I need to put another uh, joint in here. Put in a curved joint so this little tire can ride on this spline. Now when I hit play, it's actually doing something. I can see it rolling down the list, rolling down my spline. Okay. When it's done, it goes back to the beginning. I'm going to throw a measurement in here. So now I have a measurement down at the bottom. And I'll turn on my graph. When I hit play, the graph measures out my measurement and graphs it for me. And once it's finally done, it's a little chunky there because it's doing a little bit more and I'm recording my screen and probably broadcasting up on top. I'll turn my toolbar on. I want to probe this. So I can roll my model back and forth. All I did on here was just measure the angle. I'll switch this to two uh, peaks. And again, I can see uh, if I pull this far enough, I'll get to the next peak. There we go. I can go from peak to peak on this and find uh, my extremes. And 
And that's a, a new tool called Animation Designer. There's one more in here. This is a, a, a wing flap. I have added constraints in here already. So I'm not going to bore you with adding, adding in these, all these concentric constraints. Uh, but if I go in and just right click on this little lever here and move it, um, what, used to, what I used to do in NX is I'd make all my constraints and I could, I could do what's called poor man's motion. If you're clever with your constraints, you can make, a, make an assembly move, but I've obviously missed some stuff in here, so I'll cancel that. In Animation Designer, um, I can add joints from assembly, and it's, it goes through and sees. I hope it's doing something. There it is. It sees all of my um, constraints that I put in there and assumes what I want to make out of them. I say, okay, that's fine. I get an information window telling me basically the same thing. I do know that uh, I, since I already tried to move this, I need to fix this one in, in, in space. So I want to make this a fixed joint. And if I put a position motor right here and I put an angle on it, see if it see if it actually works here. Hit play, and I can see there I've got a slider joint that I must have missed. Let's go back and put in another joint in here. Put a slider joint in between these two parts in this particular vector. And very quickly I'm able to animate my model. I'm going to come over here to Timeline and click Play again. And it makes my timeline a little bit bigger. And I can drag this back and forth in my timeline. I haven't really set up any, any measurements or uh, anything that, that, I, that I'm trying to, to, to monitor on this one yet. But I drag this out to the end, and I can see this might be a useful arrangement for my assembly. Right here, there's a great, great big button, Capture Arrangement. I'll drag this back to the beginning. Very beginning there. I'll play it again just to, you know, to see that it works. And then over here in my assemblies, or rather my assemblies tab here, when I right click on this and go to arrangements, I've got animation designer arrangement time. Click on that, pops it out, click on it again, to the default, brings it back. So I'm able to take, as a designer, not as a, a FEA and anal an analyst, I'm able to, to take my existing constraints, linkage constraints, whatever, and start to animate them in animation designer. It's a very cool tool. Any questions? I know this was kind of fast. <laughs> we got more stuff coming too. So, yes, sir. I, I've heard talk about stuff like that coming, but I haven't actually seen it myself. Um, that kind of gets a little bit deeper into uh, FEA analysis than I'm comfortable with talking about. But yeah, it's uh, I think it's coming um, so that it can you can decide beforehand the type of lattice you'd want to put on there before you try to take that that huge hit on calculation time to, to build it for you. So yeah, it's, um, it's I think it's coming. Anyone else? Yes, sir. I'll have, to take, I'll have to take that one offline. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not sure how well it talks to the existing animation package that's in NX for FEA. I have to look at that. It's a good question. Anyone? Anyone? All right. Oh, yay. Ray. <laughs> Let me pause this real quick. Thank you.